<clears throat> Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner. You know, don't you? You know, that's why you've tuned in. Uh, today, I'm joined by ben. ben from where? Uh, Derby. Ben from Derby. Can I ask you yeah. something, Ben? Why does it say Katie Pierce on your YouTube? Because uh, I didn't realise at first, but I'm, everything on mine is logged into my girlfriend's. So, all right, okay. All right. So I've been getting all these texts off you on the comment section, and really, you, <laughs> you, 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 your name's uh, Ben from Derby, and I'm thinking, oh, is this Katie here? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make another account as I've never got around. I thought I've already commented once, so I may as well just keep carry on on this account now. Yeah, you may, may as well be incognito, aren't you? Leaving your comments. Yeah. Okay. All well, right. Uh, what What did you want to talk about, uh, Ben? Yeah. So first of all, like the whole matchroom thing and the quality control. So. If, if you were going to get a product like, I don't know, if you were getting an extension or your garden done or something, yeah. and, you know, you get a quote, and obviously you'd expect it to be to a certain level and you'd pay for it. But obviously with all these pay-per-views, pop, right, all the last ones in the last year, yeah. why too? I'd, if someone done your garden a bit rubbish and, you know, you paid a load of money, people would be complaining, but I don't... But because it's boxing, no one seems to complain, and it's okay to make people pay their hard-earned money to um, and they'll get the same product. But if it was anything in life, or you went to a sofa store and the sofa was no good, you'd, people would complain. But boxing, why can you get away with it? Because people are paying for it, aren't they? This is just the way of the world, I'm afraid, mate. I, I don't know. It's just in boxing, you see, uh, once you've watched it, it's like taking cocaine. Once you've had a gram of cocaine, you think, that would crap that. You, you, you'll still do it again when you've had a drink. And it's the same with boxing. You've been out for a pint, you want to watch boxing. You'll have a moan about it. It'll give you something to talk about. But they're creating events now. They're letting fireworks off in people's back gardens. And they're having all these fancy entrances and light lighting and uh, neon lighting and electronics and, and music in background and sweet Caroline and all that and Eddie Hearns checking as many hands as he can and saying he hopes everybody has a good night and all that carry on and it's creating the event but yeah. it's no good if the product's crap is it you can go no. to a show you can go to a car showroom uh, down here at Hazel Dean's and you can go buy a, a knackered Volkswagen Polo 53 plate. You can put it in the showroom and they can put a big sheet on it because that's what they do there because I've had a golf from there. They put a sheet o over it in the showroom. You send your missus in to pick it up and that's all excited and that. And it's great. But what happens if you go that partic another particular day and you buy a 53 plate that's scabby with no MOT in it but you've got all big build-up? You'd be like, what's this? What's this? Yeah. I bought this. It's leaking yeah. oil. What's this? That's all what we bought, mate. It's one of them, isn't it? So, and that's the same with boxing, mate. That's the same with boxing. The it, serving up, shite, polishing turds. Well, I'm glad you've uh, sussed it out. Well done. Thing is, though, if it's like a, tr <clears throat> if it's like a tradesman, people will be people. Well, people will be post online about boxing anyway, but people will be giving it bad reviews and saying this guy's a scammer. But in boxing, no one, do you know, it's different. Do you know what I mean? It's it's crap. But no one's going around saying Eddie Earns scamming the fans and all this. Do you know what I mean? I am. Yeah, you are. I am. No, I'm and people are joining the Porky Express train. People are saying, do you know what? I agree with him. Eddie's not going to let anybody say anything because if they do in the media, they won't get access. Trish Dixon, right? Let me tell you this. He's going around saying it, but he's whispering it to people. But he's not going to say it on his channel, is he? Mm. He's not going to say it in Boxing News magazine or whatever he does now. I don't know what he does now. He's a bit of a ponce, isn't he? Well, whatever he does, he's not saying it on social media. Matt Christie has got his tongue that far up Eddie Earns hula hoop. He's eating his food for him. He's not going to say it, is he? Eddie to the Boxing News. Gareth A. Davis isn't going to say it in his Daily Telegraph comment, com, uh, comment section or whatever, column. 
They're not going to say it because they want access. Coogan, Michelle Phelps, Rob Tebby, all that shower. All them YouTubers with a hula hoop in them. They're not going to say it, but they know it. They don't care for fans. They care for themselves. They care for the moment. But the thing glad... is... Go on. No, sorry, go on. But no, I was just going to say, I'm glad you spotted it out. I'm glad you spotted it. Yeah. Obviously, the, the, no one can do any wrong. Like, it doesn't matter how bad show put on. Like, I, I'll admit, when I first started watching boxing, um, like, I used to watch all the interviews and that on IFL. It didn't matter who it was. I'd go on, yeah, I'll just drop some. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I'd watch them all, but now I don't, I hardly watch. I watch a few, few or flick through a few, but I don't watch them all. But obviously before I used to watch them all and be dead interested. But now it's like, even if they could put on a terrible show, Coogan's not going to obviously say to him, oh, do you not think this person could be fighting this person? It's like, it's like he's made the best fight ever. Like they could put Conor Ben in against, I don't know. I don't even know who. Someone no one's heard of. He could be have an undefeated record. He'll say, oh, he's undefeated. This is a really tough test. But it doesn't matter how bad the fight is that they put on. Coogan and people always say it's really good. And it's just not, it's just not really, but it's just tricking the fans. But the fans now, they're not really boxing fans, are they? they just want to, it's like going to a nightclub. That's what it's became. Mm -hmm. But why, why is a sport, okay, obviously it makes more money, but it attracts more fans, but it's, it's about the sport. People are watching the fights. They're not watching to sing and wear the best clothes. I know it's a night out now, and that's what Eddie made it into, but it's they kind of lost the whole point of it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think that uh, it's shocking what's going on. And like I just said there, nobody is doing anything about it, are they? Nobody's saying a word, only me. There's no and then media saying anything. Yeah, and then people are getting really high in the rankings. Like, I haven't, I don't really look at them, but what's kind of in the WBA? Isn't he like top five or so much? And who's he for? You're not won a British title yet or a Commonwealth. The thing is, it's like it's like for the since. Can you remember when um, Kel Brook was meant to fight Devon Alexander and Lee Purdy went in? Uh, since then, or a bit before that, it's like it's the in thing now for Brits to, you know, fight these people no one's heard of, get high in the rankings, and they've never fought who's for a world title. Well, I don't understand. Like, no, they don't. I don't know that you know the numbers, but how many have actually won? And it's just repeating, repeating over all these years. It just keeps repeating, and then a few get put on pay per view. It was like when they put Brian Rose in with Andrade that time, and he got absolutely battered. Everyone knew he wasn't going to win. I mean, I remember when uh, who did who did he fight on that Kel Brook Senchenko card? Uh, Brian Rose. I don't you know, but I I was there, mate. I was there, shouting <laughs> Seaside, Seaside. He was chief support. And I thought he got beat, but it was split, wasn't it? That was close. Yeah, I went to that. But the thing is now, like, they're going to use... Be the. I I don't think they'll put Kel Brook with uh, Conor Ben, but I think they'll be looking to put Conor Ben in a fight where with someone who's got a bit of a name, but it's not really much of a risk. But I, but I think if he fights Kel Brook now, I think that's good. Well, it's not good because I've been a big Kel Brook fan and it wouldn't be nice to see him fighting Conor Ben. But I don't think... I don't know. I don't... I don't think he'd win that. I don't know. I don't think he'd beat Kelbrook. Kelbrook yeah. would smash Conor Ben to pieces. He wouldn't get near him. He would tie him up in knots. It would be a bloodbath, even though Kel's face is not as strong as it used to be. He would tie him up in knots, mate. It'd be a, it'd be a walk in the park for Kelbrook, that. Yeah, and the thing is with Kel Brook, uh, he was fighting Frankie Gavin and all these people. I know it's a while ago now, but I was a big Kel Brook fan and I don't understand, did Eddie not want to put the money in his pocket to get the opponent, you know, he's a world champion? Or I don't understand, what, what do you think happened to that? And then they put him in with Golovkin. I think they didn't want to put Kel Brook in with certain people unless it were pay-per-view because they thought he might get beat, especially after that uh, in with Dicky Bow. He fought in with Dicky Bow twice, didn't he? Carson Jones. Jones, yeah. Yeah. They didn't want another Carson Jones, so they, 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 they wrapped him in cotton wool and then threw him to Wolves, didn't they? Yeah. But the thing is, even like Carson Jones, I went to that second fight. He was on a Luke Campbell card, wasn't he, outside at Hull? Can you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Um, even shows like that, even that was them kind of shows that Eddie did were miles better than the ones now. There was uh, Derry Matthews, Tommy Coyle. That was a good fight. You like you yeah. don't even get like that anymore on any of the shows. They're all people against 
people losing records and there's not really there's not even that many domestic 50 so they don't well frank does a few but like with the divorce and um what's his name joe joyce yeah yeah but and the thing is as well with uh kel brook i don't want to it's a bit irrelevant to the boxing so if you want to say it, but everyone's always said for years about you know Kelbrook being gay and that, but then people have interviewed it. Obviously, he's not going to say it by the end, but everyone always says it, don't they, in boxing? But no, and then that that guy who stabbed him in Tenerife, they were saying, Yeah, the police are looking for him, the police are looking for him. It's years later, no one's heard about it all. <laughs> I don't, can't comment on that, but maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe he ran away. Yeah, maybe. What do you think to um, uh, talking of Joe Joyce? What do you think to um, like Sam Jones? Because he's from Derby as well. Sam Jones. Yeah. Uh, I saw him hula hooping Frank Warren at a press conference the other day. Who's Joyce fighting next? Carlos Tackham. Oh, I think he'll beat he'll beat him. Carlos Obviously. Tackham's shot to bits. He's just lost to Chisora, hasn't he? Yeah. Talk, talking of a fighter more from up near your end, uh, Jamie McDonnell. Yeah. Uh, fight. Because I, I sometimes see his Instagram and he looks like he's like painting and decorating or something, but then he'll be at the gym. Like, is he retired or not? Or what's happening with him? Does, you know, retired. Jamie McDonald's retired. He's a plasterer. Oh, and then um, has he not? I don't. I don't get why he's doing that. After he's had, hasn't he had quite a few good paydays? I don't know. I I, uh, I don't know his financial situation. I, I don't know. Uh, but I've heard he's retired. Uh, they're yeah, both, they're both more or less finished, aren't they? Him and his brother. But yeah, because uh, if... Jamie, Jamie's done well. Uh, yeah, in he's got a great record. Yeah, because I remember when he was fighting and that, and he had his. I don't know if it was his wife or something, but I don't know. Think he's. I don't think he's with her anymore. So I don't know if there was something to do with he lost a lot more. Than that. But obviously, sometimes in boxing, it's a bit sad that obviously, what did he go to China or Japan? Who did he fight that time? Um, he, fought, he fought in Japan against I know, I know you or something. He got iced in round one. Yeah, I remember that, and they said it was about the weight. But the thing is, obviously, people have these fights and all this, and then after, like Jamie's back painting and decorating. I don't know his financials, and it's it's not really relevant. But obviously, he's done all this training, and he's got in with people. You can't say he hasn't fought people because he's 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 not. They've not really given him a career like Conor Ben, have they? I know his career ain't over yet, but he's he's still he hasn't had it pick like not picked but you know what I mean don't you he could have been looked after a lot better and then he's finished now and not what was the point in it because he's got belts and that and achievements but where he's got nothing to show for it and obviously Matchroom have got all these things like I was on the Matchroom website and they've got the uh, actual employed strength and conditioning coach I think it's he's called Perform365 or somebody he trains Connor Bear and all the people in Tony Sims gym he's actually on the list and they can they can set up stuff like that. And you know, when people sign a match room, they'll probably say, Yeah, go with this trainer, go with this trainer. They can set up stuff like that. So I don't know why they can't set up anything else, like a percentage out of their purse or summer and get it all as one. Obviously, I know if people have got bad, bad spending habits, if they spend it all in once, that's that. But at least then when they finish, they'll have something and it won't be fight, get paid, spend it. And you, you need to keep fighting then, don't you? Uh, you were asking me a question then, and then you were answering it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. Uh, just calm down. You're all right. I'm not going to bite your fruit zone. Right. Are you, are you saying that fighters yeah. should be a little bit more careful with the money? Is that what you're saying? Mm, I, I think someone needs to be, some kind of organisation needs to be there to help them. Yeah, they should be, but we're talking about the British Boxing Board of Control here. At least the, the Board of No Control. You know, so don't hold your breath on that. I've been shouting for that for years. But I think that uh, so much should go into a fund, but who could they trust to look after it? They can't be trusted, Boxing Board of Control, can they, or No Control? True. But, but Eddie Hearn match him into this massive brand, like... I don't really watch UFC, but a bit like that. So I'm, I'm sure, like, even he could do something for all matchroom fighters. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. He could do. I think he could do. Yeah. Um, 
Um, you know, you know that show the other week. You know um, that fight. Uh, I don't know if he's from Doncaster or where. John Fuchs is. Was that just a one-off comeback, or is he actually back now? Uh, John Fuchs is from Sheffield, not Doncaster, and he's been out at ring over seven years. He's a he was a lightweight. He's just come back as a super middle, and he wanted he wanted to fight Paul Scaff, uh, who's a lightweight. They wanted Paul Scaff to step up to super middle to fight Fuki, uh, uh, two days notice, and Mick, Mick Whale said no to matchmaker Jason McCrory. But John Fuchs fought well on the night, apparently, from what I've heard, and he's going to fight again. So if it's something he wants to do, who's to stop him fighting if it's inside him and he wants to do it? Good luck to him. That's what I say. Yeah. But he, yeah, never, I... he never really did anything in his prime, so what's he going to do now? Is he just doing it because he wants to? Because he's got a son, little Reggie, and he wants to show him that he's a fighter? I don't know, but I don't see him winning a belt. Uh, winning a British or a Commonwealth or anything like that, but if it something he enjoys doing, why not? Why yeah. Not? Um, another thing in boxing, it was quite. They were at one stage, like before. Can you remember when um, uh, you back, uh, he was a quite well spoke about, not well well spoke about when he was fighting on Box Nation, that and his dad was getting in the ring, looking at him, being all silly and that. But over these past few years, he's a bit quiet. I know he's had a few people could say more talked about fires like De Gale, but like, no one mentions or cares about him anymore. What what do you think happened with his career? And Are we talking what? about James De Gale? Uh, no, Eubank Jr. Oh, I don't think anything's happened with his career. He's still fighting, isn't he? Yeah, but obviously, you know, when he used to be fighting on Box Nation and, you know, his dad used to get in the ring and look at him and all that, quite a lot of people were talking about him, but not that many people really be speaking about him or bothered about the fights now. I think you'll see a lot of Eubank in the next six months. I think it's just, we've just had a 18 month pandemic, haven't we? Yeah. Is it February, what we're on here, June. So 16 months, we've been battling this plague thing or whatever it is, virus. And it's been hard for a lot of people to get out, hasn't it, really, in my opinion. But I think Eubank will come again. But he's just been in America anyway, a new trainer gelling with him. So Yeah. I'd like to see him fight Billy Joe again. And I think if he did what he did at the end from the start, I think he can win. Well, it depends what Billy Joe. I think because Billy Joe, I do rate him, but I think as soon as people start landing a few and it's really getting on top, I don't, I've, obviously the Canelo fight is the only one that's shown it, but I think he wants to get out of there straight away. Yeah. I mean, you could, you know, when he got, yeah, as soon as he got hit with that uh, uppercut, uh, you could tell he was just moving around the ring, but then you, I could tell. I thought he's not going to carry on here. You could, as soon as he got hit, his whole face and body language changed, and he was just moving around, not really throwing any punches. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You, you may be right. You may be right. But uh, I personally think that Billy Joe were out in his depth, and I think I think he tried to just stay out of range and just not get hurt. And I think after. When he, after that last round he fought, I think when he sat on his stool, I think he knew the game were up. He couldn't do nothing with him. And there's no shame in that. I mean, you look, at, look at what he's achieved. But it's the cover-up afterwards that I don't like. And they, they, they've dubbed the audio in between the rounds and all the deleting of videos and and the, the propaganda that's come out from all them involved, all the characters. And it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Consider do, do you think considering what went on before and what they all had to say and everything. Yeah. Do you think Mark Tibbs did stop it? Because the corner, it was because he was saying after, yes, I stopped the fight. And then Ben Davidson said, no, I stopped the fight. But then all I saw in the corner was Billy shaking his head. And then, like, the, I don't know if the camera changed and then it was off. Like, I don't really know who's lying and who's telling the truth. Did it look to you like Billy Joe were jumping up saying, don't stop this? You know, like Wilder when he was going berserk when they threw up toweling on him against Tyson no. Fury. Do you remember that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, no. well, right, you know, Billy Joe, did you see Billy Joe at any time jump up and say, no, I'm fighting on? Did you all push his corner or anything like that? Did you see that? Yes or no? Right, so who do you think stopped the fight? Mark Tibbs. 
the head trainer or Ben Davidson who's been in who been in that camp one day. Who do you think? Mark Tips. There you go. So who would you believe on a lineup? Billy Joe, Eddie Earn, Ben Davidson, or Mark Tibbs? Which one of them would you believe? Mark Tibbs. There you go. So. Yeah. Because because the thing is with Billy, he people are saying he's been uploading loads to Instagram and that. I think he's slowly that be out there a bit more and act normal. He's been uploading videos, driving and that every day, but. I think that obviously he's saying that Ben said all this stuff, but like you said, he could, he would have been getting up saying, no, 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 I want to carry on fighting. No, Mark, I, leave my eye. Give me one more round. I'll try and do everything I can. But there was no argument. And it's like he knew he didn't want to be in there. Mark Tibbs said to him, have you got one more round in you? In you? And he didn't like the response. He never said what Billy said. He just said he didn't like the response. So he pulled the fight. And that's end off. There's no shame in that. The guy was getting knocked about. They couldn't put a dint in Canelo. Look, before the fight happened, I said, Billy Joe is a non-puncher, but he's got skills. Canelo's got it all, hasn't he? He's like a 9 out of 10 across the board, isn't he? Billy's a 6 out of 10 for some things and an 8 out of 10 for some, some others. But if you add it all up, he's more or less lost in every department, hasn't he? Yeah. Although, although but Canelo's probably... A fraction less on him than skills. Only the advantage Billy had with a southpaw. When it come down to it, Billy had never been in a firefight, had he? How many firefights have you seen him in in a fight? No. Only, only, only when Eubank started, when he started getting tired in the Eubank at the end, that's it. And that, you could put that down as a draw, couldn't you, that fight? Yeah, that was really close. And he was grabbing on and stuff in the last 9-12. to 12. Yeah, so, but... There's no shame in it. Billy's got millions in bank. He's still got all his, all his faculties intact and he'll, 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 move, he'll move on and do something else with his life. But I don't know what he's going to do if he comes back and what sort of person would want to promote him again or family member would want him to fight again if that injury is as serious as what Billy says. Because he's saying it with this mega serious injury. So why is Billy Joe Saunders fighting again? Because I'm hearing stories that he's going to fight again, but... I thought he had a serious injury. Or did he have a serious injury? Yeah. Not, this is we've not seen any x-rays, have we? No, and everyone obviously asked Daniel Dubois. One is Eddie Earn said he wants to see proof. But the thing is with Billy as well, I remember when Kel Brook had them injuries, it was quite a while after, wasn't it, that it took him to recover. But on Instagram every day, Billy's driving his G Wagon and his eyes fine. Like he will either he's got a the, one of the best surgeons or I don't know, but, but Kel Brook said that he had one of the best surgeons and his was quite fast. But it'll be interesting to see what happens next. I don't I don't think that he'll... I think, I think he'll fight again, but I don't think he'll work with Mark Tibbs again. I think he'll probably have Ben Ben in his corner, maybe for one more. What do you think? Well, Ben Davidson likes to exert himself into every training camp, doesn't he? That's a, that's a big fight, doesn't he? He always seems to be there. He... He's the original Johnny on the spot, isn't he? <laughs> oh, that's how I look at it. Yeah, but the thing is with Ben Davison, obviously no one can argue that obviously Tyson Fury lost the weight and all that, but then you know what happened towards the end. But talking of Tyson, what do you think about um, Tom, Tommy and his career and uh, obviously John training in and what realistically, what do you think Tommy can win? Area in title, English title? None. None. I don't think he wins a belt. Yeah. I don't think he wins any of the main belts, area, English, British, Commonwealth, European or world. None of them six. They might be able to get him a trinket belt, but I don't see him doing anything in boxing at all. Not after what not what from what I've seen from them first six fights. No. No. What about any vacant? What about if a belt's vacant and they get a bit of a good match up? Come on. If Tommy Fury fought somebody for a vacant southern area title or central area or whatever, mm. I'd, I'd be amazed if he won it. And I'd like to see what opponent is because from what I've seen, guys at that level, right, would ice him. Mm. So, what, what, what direction do you think that there is a career in life? 
think they'll go for like a continental belt and just try and get them high in the rankings and have a world title shot. Like what, what, I don't understand what, what do you think they're going to try and do? And do you think that they know that his, his ability isn't actually that high? Obviously he's got a bit of a profile, hasn't he, from that TV programme? I think they're going to look to try and get him in with one of them Paul brothers from America and get him a big payday on Tyson's undercard and try and sell the Tyson, the Tyson fight. I think they're probably hanging back, hoping to get Tommy on undercard if Tyson fights Joshua. Because that'll be the biggest fight in the world, won't it? And one of them Paul brothers will want to be a part of that. And I think that's what they'll try and do. Do you think that the Wilder Fury will happen on the date that is set forward? Wasn't there a press conference the other day? Do you think it will go ahead? Uh, I hope so, but I don't believe anything at this stage of the game. Anything that Tyson Fury says that comes out of his mouth, I don't believe. I don't believe. I think he's a walking contradiction. So if he fights Wilder again, beats him, good. I might get back on Tyson hype train, but... At this moment in time, this way Joshua and Fury, it's left a bad taste in my mouth and it's all pointing towards Tyson and Bob Arum and Frank yeah. Warren uh, messing, it, messing it all up, isn't it? That's how it's looking to me. Um, how, how do you think that uh, new Sky deal is going to go? Because Frank Warren's came out and said that um, all top the top ranked fights are going to be on there, but Tyson isn't. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, from from what, what they were saying, uh, there's 20 dates Eddie used to have a year. They'll give 14 to that Ben Shalom. He's just going to be a puppet for Sky. He's only a, only a young kid. They'll be able to control him. John Wishausen will control him. The other six dates they'll give for international dates, it beamed in early hours, that's going to be Bob Arum, top rank. And if Tyson ain't going to be on any of them, he'll obviously be on BT Sport, but... I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how it pans out, but uh, let's hope that we get the fights that we want because there's there's loads of fights that should be made in this country, but they're not getting made, and it's mm. because everybody's got a big ego. Mm. The thing, do you think that you know if um, if, if Fury wouldn't have fought Wilder, would he have just got sued and sued loads and just said forget the belt and want to fight Joshua? Yeah, if if Tyson Fury didn't fight Wilder, they were going to be sued if he fought someone else. Yeah, there were going to be no step aside. And I called it, obviously, 16 months ago and everybody said they were crazy. But if you all remember, it was pretty simple. Shelley Finkel said they had a trilogy, a signed contract for three fights. And they've kept quiet and stuck to the guns. Well, they've let everybody else run their mouths and now they've all got egg and chips on the face, haven't they? Yeah, and we're still waiting for the announcement. Eddie Hearn said that they're going to announce Joshua Usyk next week. He said that two weeks ago, and then he said it for the next week, and then apparently this yeah. week it's going to... Well, if, that... you, if you remember what I said, I said that they're not going to happen. But if it happens, good. But I said it weren't going to happen. Now, in my opinion, I think Eddie Hearn's going to wait to see what happens with Fury... And Wilder is going to drag it out as long as he can. So he can then make his move. Because everything for them is geared around getting more money. They don't care for fans. They care for money. So, Yeah. But do you, do you, won't, um, if he doesn't fight Usyk, what will happen with the WBO? Will, will he have to give that up or not? Yeah, well, obviously, he'd have to, give it, he'd have to vacate it, wouldn't he? And the next in line and fight for it, wouldn't they? Who's that? Who's, who would that be? Usyk and Joyce. Joe oh. Joyce. Mm. Yeah. What else have I got here? Um, do you know now they're moving to Dazon? Do you still think uh, fights like um, Parker Chisora too will happen? Because obviously, Eddie knew Eddie knew that he can basically the fan. He doesn't. He knows what every not whatever, but. Basically, whatever he puts on, a lot of the fans are gonna they're gonna buy it. So he can pay people all this money. It doesn't really matter. It's the fans paying for it. But now, who's gonna be paying for it? Will he want to use that budget to pay them fighters money that they're not really worthy of? The fight isn't really worth whatever. You're you're asking me questions, and, and there's like four or five, and you're answering them as you're talking. 
<laughs> Sorry. Well, I, don't, I don't know. What, I don't know where we are with that. What you just said. Could you just shorten yeah. it a bit? And yeah. Yeah. No worries. Um. All right. So, do you think that the fights that have happened on pay per view Sky will carry on when he moves to Dazzler? I think I think that eventually they will do a pay per view platform at their own because I don't think this what they're charging at the moment will be sustainable for everybody to be paid because you've got Canelo, on it. You know mm. I mean? Then they're only charging two pound a month, which is great, isn't it? But I don't think they'll be able to keep that going for much longer. So yeah, I do think Dazzle will have a pay per view model, which contradicts everything Eddie said when he said that pay per view is dying on its ass. Well. Now it, it tides turned on it, and the landscape changes in boxing very quickly. Only takes one punch to alter everything. I always remember that. Mm. But but uh, let's say they make this pay per view. Do you think he'll crap on it um, as on Sky, or do you not think that he'll be able to get away with it as much? I think he'll get away with a lot at Dazone because he looks like he's got. The quality control people in his pocket are all eating out of his hand. Whereas at Sky, I think they all got a little bit fed up of him after they give him that big deal. I think they all thought, do you know what? He's just taking liberties here. And I think they just want a bit of him. And if you yeah. notice on the Sky website, they took Eddie and Eddie and off the website and then he's off he, he's off it now. He's not on any of Sky's websites and things like that. So, and he, he came out with some other day that I didn't like, and he say that Sky just weren't doing numbers for him and all that. Why were he having a dig at them? They've been good to him, Sky. So, I don't know, but I think Eddie's ego is off at charts in it at the moment. Do you think he'll be in boxing for a lot longer with all this Dazzo and stuff, or do you think that will come? Uh, I've, I'm going to get it two years before they say, do you know what? What's going on here with this guy here? But Eddie won't be bothered by that stage. He'll just pile loads of money up, won't he? I think he'll stop boxing then or go back to Sky. I think if Anthony Joshua bails out boxing, I think you'll see Matchroom gone. I think they'll be mm. gone. I think they'll be gone. What, what do you think is going to happen with Joshua and Sky and Dazone? Which one? Do you think he'll stay with Sky? or? It's an hard one, that. It's a very, very hard one. I think he might just go with Dazone, but how they're gonna how they're gonna pay it? So I don't know. It's all a lot and it's hitching on Fury Wilder. So this is why I think that Fury Wilder doesn't happen next month. I think he mm. gets put back, and then, then Eddie's got to make his move with Joshua, has not he? Yeah. So I think that gets put back, and everybody's it's a, it's a game of chess at the moment, isn't it? With TV contracts in background and pay-per-view or non-pay-per-view or subscription. And Fury and Joshua have become commodities now, aren't they? And the people's fighting to get a piece of them. And I think there's too many cooks spoiling the broth at the moment. So I don't think that fight happens next month. But if it does, whatever. But I just don't think it does. I think there's a lot of gamesmanship going on behind the scenes. But that's boxing. The thing is, what 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 can we do as as actual fans that care about boxing? Because obviously, I don't want to be negative, but I don't I don't know if it can get worse. But they're only just going to keep getting worse. You know, they're like matchups and fuck shows. What can we do? Because these people that people are still paying for it and going to it and obviously enjoy it that aren't actual boxing fans. But it's it's just going to get keep getting worse if you can get away with it. Surely, I don't want to be negative, but. Yeah, uh, my opinion is this. Don't pay for pay-per-views. Get a stream. Get yeah, a I don't... stream. Don't pay for it. Don't pay for it. Mm. Well, the thing is, if they're getting away with it now, then let's say, I don't know, two, three years' time, you obviously, I don't have all the data, but you can probably see the data from two, three years to now. Obviously, it's probably going to carry on getting worse. Like, how much worse can it is it going to get but then it's not going to matter because all these people that just want to obviously have a night out and that they're still buying it aren't they yeah what can you do well when you've got all these youtubers giving these people airtime and letting them promote themselves that's what's going on do you think it could get to a stage uh, what do you think can happen do you think it can get to a stage where the actual fighters um like how can i put it Stuff like the YouTubers and that are regular. People pref people are going to prefer to watch that than the other ones. The people watching it aren't boxing fans now. Do you think it can get to that stage or not? 
Yeah, I think we're already getting to that stage now, isn't it, where people are crossing over. They're looking to watch events now, like that thriller with Oscar De La Hoya and things like that. And it's having a detrimental effect on boxing because nobody's taking it serious. Even boxing border control are letting all these white collar people just sign up willy nilly because they want to keep earning. And, and boxing now, it's, it, it's proper boxing people are asking what's going on. But they want to get the kids out where you've got this influx of loads and everybody wants to be a, a boxer, don't they? And have a, have a medical, you've got bodybuilders, doormen and whatever sort of people, painters, plasterers. Everybody's passing an eye test and wants to be a boxer. It's craziness. It's absolute craziness. And there's going to be a lot of people have two or three fights and then get flogged. And I don't know where sport's heading and the people at the top, your Warrens and Earns, they've got to look at what they're doing and then the board of control have a sanctioning body because it, it, it's in a mess and nobody's mm. speaking out. It's in a total mess. It's a shambles. Well, what you know the board, you know to get your license, is it still the same procedure as it used to be? Are these people genuinely passing or is it easy to get license or what? What's going well, on? Got, well, what I've just said to you there, you have a medical, don't you? You have a medical, yeah. you have a brain scan and an eye test and they ask you loads of questions about your health and all that. They are knocking some people back, but majority of them are getting the licences and what experience have they got as boxers? Oh, I've done a white collar. What does that mean? Well, that's enough to get a, a pro license. Now. Well, if you've got a trainer behind you and a manager and you've passed an eye test and a brain scan... Yeah, you can have a license. Well, I, I think they should bring something in about that. Like, you've got to have had at least maybe so many amateur bouts. I know some people are, the amateur record suggests, but. If you're a trial, would... don't they? If you've not had an amateur fight, they'll want to see you spar and somebody will come and look at you. That's all, what they'll do. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you've got a trainer saying, this kid's mass dad, <laughs> they're going to uh, give you a license, aren't they? So. How, what um, are your top five trainers now in England? Well, if it, well, whatever I say, people are going to say, oh, you're biased because you know them. I think if yeah. you've got a border control licence, you you must be a decent trainer because you've got a border control licence. You're in the game. I've seen trainers who I don't rate train world champions. And I've seen trainers who I think are fantastic don't get to train world champions. So it, it, it swings and roundabouts. But so... I could give you a list of a top five of trainers that I like, but then there's people I get on with. So, but I've mentioned this many, many times on my channel who I rate, but I'm, I'm not going to say who because it's all on channel. You'll have to go have a look. Yeah, no, I have seen it then. Yeah. But um, what are you asking for for then? I thought that you might say ones that. Well, I think Peter Fury is a good trainer. I think Josh Wales is a good trainer, but Josh and. Had a champion yet, has he? He's up and coming. I think Richard Towers is all right. He's just won his first belt with Cash Alley. I think uh, uh, Arun Edley's all right. I think Joe Gallagher, he's the most decorated trainer in the country, isn't he? Going back 100 and odd year, I rate him. I rate Nick Manners. I think Pat Barrett's trainer at year. Uh, I rate Sean O'Hagan, what he's done with Josh. Uh, maybe his matchmaking hasn't been so good lately, but who knows? But Everybody's different. I rate Robert McCracken, but he got lucky with Carl Froch because he were World Championship bronze. And then he got Joshua on his on, on his lap, didn't he? Because he were up here at EIS. Everybody, everybody has a good a bit of good luck. Some people have good luck, some don't. Robert McCracken's worth 10 million. Never had a pot to piss in 10 years ago, though, did he? So he's been at right place at right time. I rate Tony Sims, he's done well for people, but he didn't do well for Lee Purdy, did he? Putting him in with Devil Alexander. We could go on all day here, couldn't we? Do you, know, do you know what I mean about, yeah. about trainers? I, I, they say Dave Cole was a good trainer, but he's an arse licker. Do you know what I mean? He gets people dropped on his lap. Who has he trained from scratch? Nobody. I think Chris Smedley's a fantastic trainer, but he doesn't arse lick. Mick Wales is a fantastic trainer. He doesn't arse lick. Some people are not into all that after-party arse licking and hula hooping people so they're eating the fucking food. Other people are stuck-up people, aren't they? So in boxing, but in people in boxing know who are the arse lickers and who isn't an arse licker. You see where I'm coming from? I know who's an arse licker when they come in my company because I just go like that. I don't want to talk to them. And they know as well. Other people I'll say up to. You know what I mean? Mm. So I, I've got no time for arse lickers and people that talk utter shite, shite talkers. 
and boxing's 97% shite talkers. So we could go on forever with that one, can't we? Yeah. Why do you think that, um, like, when certain fighters join certain, like, promotion out, some people would say that they're pushed to go with certain trainers? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, people now know that if they go with a certain, like, Coldwell, they can get access to uh, Eddie Hearn. So mm. they'll want... They'll want Who's that kid who's just got? Is it uh, one at Rick Richards? Is it Richards who's gone to Cole? Cole was it Laurent Richards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's only he's gone been... there. He's only gone there because Warren couldn't deliver for him. So if he goes to Caldwell, he's got access to Ed Yearn. If you go to Tony Sims and McCracken, they've got access to Ed. Tony Sims and McCracken refused to work with Frank Warren, but they've got access to her, haven't they? So that's mm. just how it goes. Um, well, well, it's that simple. So say they go to train with them and it doesn't matter if they're popular or don't sell many tickets or anything, do you, they, they can get them on certain shows. It's that easy. Yeah, well, Jamie McDonnell went and Gavin McDonnell went to Dave Colwell, didn't they? But they don't sell a ticket. Jamie McDonnell were a world champion. What did Eddie do with him? He put him on, he put him as the away fighter outside the country, didn't he? He fought in Dallas twice, didn't he? And then he, yeah, he, he right. fought in Japan. He got paid big on all them fights, but he never did anything at UK with him. Dennis Hobson put Jamie on McDonald at Doncaster Rovers football ground. Lost 300, yeah. 300 grand on the show in his hometown. He couldn't even do a thousand tickets. I think he did 932 tickets in Doncaster in a football stadium, world title first ever. Eddie Hearn would have seen that and thought, well, he doesn't do tickets so he can get on his bike, but I'll take him anyway so no one else can have him. And that's how it goes. It's just chess moves behind the behind the yeah. fights. Well, that well was that at the Keep Stadium with Jamie McDonnell. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, you know, like even the EIS. Obviously, yeah. I know it's amateurs, but how many Frank, how many Frank Warren fighters would you see just there at the odd time? Whereas with some of the matchroom fighters, you might see him doing a bit there at the odd time. Not all the time, but do you know what I mean? None. But it's, yeah, but it's meant. But it's it's lottery funded, isn't it? It's meant. It's yeah. Yeah, lottery yeah. funders. Yeah, so it's just wasting people's like time because it's not fair. Because obviously there's the best, um, there's the best stuff there. But if you're a pro, you're a pro. You're not an amateur anymore. I think there needs to be. This is what I mean with boxing. There needs to be more kind of like rulings, or you can do this, you can't. Because otherwise, you're just going to get out of hand. And they, everyone knows, they've got state of the art facilities there someone else might not be able to access that or use it just because with this promoter and it's all just became a bit too much. I think, obviously, we know they don't, but everyone should work with everyone or even if they're not willing to, it should be an even playing field. The board need to bring in some kind of ruling, I think, on stuff because otherwise it's a bit of an advantage, isn't it? You could potentially have a better... Bet it doesn't mean you're going to perform better, but you could have access to better facilities than another fighter. I don't know which part of that to answer because she went on a two-minute two minute question, but you were answering everything as you were going along. Are you bonkers, you were somehow? Because <laughs> you keep doing that, don't you? I don't know what... Look, the EIS is lottery funded, mate, yeah, and it's the conveyor belt. McCracken's up there, he's in charge, and Eddie Earns up there all the time. Joshua trains there. Joshua's signed Bawatsi and Akoli, Olympians from up there, and some other kid. So they've got it on lockdown, haven't they? Yeah, it's lottery funded, but what can you do? I've been banging on about it for seven years. So you're a bit late to party, aren't you now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously, it's just what can you do? With a lot of things in boxing, it's just that's it now. And it's like, like I said to you earlier, about maybe matchups getting worse. I don't know. who Does does someone new need to come in and try something different? But would that even work? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's probably something. Uh, I think McCracken might be might be done up there in another year or so. But we don't know, do we? He's got these Olympics, hasn't he? Maybe he should step down after these Olympics. I don't know, but he's not going to he's not going to knock it back, is he? Getting thousands of pounds a week from up there and getting his Joshua money, so he's not going to knock that back, is he, McCracken? No. And everyone knew at the beginning of Joshua's career that uh, Joshua was training up there because he was putting on his Snapchat and everything. Yeah. Two seconds, mate, because I've got a phone call. Right. Listen, mate, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to end it, mate, because I've got a delivery here, mate. So listen, you've had 50 minutes, haven't you? You've had a good chat. We'll have you on again. Is it Ben or Katie? What is it? 
Uh, it's Ben. Ben. Where's your mate Bill? Bill and Ben. Okay then, Ben. Well, listen, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you've had, you've had a, we've had a good chat. Uh, next time you come on, try and keep your questions. So you ask me. Keep it short. Yeah. Uh, and don't ask. Ask me and then go on to other stuff because it, you know, I'm like that. Uh, uh. <laughs> All right, but <laughs> we'll give everybody a chance for this. So don't take anything that I say to heart. I can be... Yeah, can be a bit sharp with people like you're saying oh where do you live and all that well you're going to come around rooting through my dustbin <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was born in Doncaster and I'm from Edlington originally all right how's that okay um what was I going to say before I finish I just want to say something funny obviously I was watching yeah. your from the start when you know when you used to do the videos in the shed and that and I yeah. just want to say our videos obviously were really funny, but you don't uh, you toned it down a bit now. But like, you know, and used to shout loads and that. Well, um, people keep reporting me, don't they, for filming in car? That's why the problem is. So we don't do as many now. But if I have my gimbal set up in car, we can't do a thing. So, but but yeah. So what can you do? People are trying to cut me off at the knees, but they're not doing a good job, are they? <laughs> <laughs> all right then. Well, listen, you'll get you you take care and all the best, Ben. All right. Peace out. I've, Cheers, mate. Yeah. Bye -bye. I were like pulling teeth, but we have to give him respect for coming on. Uh, an hard one, that though, Ben. Oof, God, that was an hard one. But I hope you're better next time and you're welcome on. So that's about it, really. I've got a kid coming down here. I've got a delivery now to sort, and I've got a kid ringing me now. I was on his way down from Scarborough. He came the other day, Max. All right. So peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Don't forget to hit the members join button. Sorry, hit the join button below for our members area. $5.99 a month, 30% goes to YouTube, but the rest of it we're putting into production. All right. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. Peace.